On today's show, Tesla announces the Model 3 will get CCS quick charging in Europe, and so too will the Model X and Model S, thanks to a new CCS adapter. GM says it's not going to be making any electric pickup trucks anytime soon. And Volkswagen claims it has 50 million electric cars worth of batteries already sourced, you know, in time for its big, massive EV push. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, folks. I'm back in the studio at last. And since I managed to pick up food poisoning while I was away, I'm kind of glad that I am. It's been a full 10 days since our last big roundup show. So let's get on with it. If you've been considering a Hyundai Kona Electric, you'll know there's been something of a shortage of battery packs affecting the affordable long-range EV, something that's also been a problem with the shorter-range Hyundai Ioniq EV as well. Thankfully, it seems Hyundai Kia has managed to secure a second unnamed source for lithium-ion battery packs, meaning it should be increasing its production figures shortly. Moreover, we've just found out that Hyundai has said it will ship Kona Electrics outside of the usual ZEV state launch markets in the US when deliveries begin later this year, at least if customers have a solid order, although those customers will also need a friendly, supportive dealership to do so. As part of Tesla and Elon Musk's settlement deal with the U.S. Securities and Exchanges Commission over those now infamous 420 tweets, Tesla's board of directors has chosen existing board member Robin Denholm to replace Elon Musk as chairman of the board of directors, effective immediately. Denholm is currently also chief financial officer of Australian telecommunications company Telstra, meaning she's currently not chair of Tesla's audit committee. But once her six-month notice period is complete, she will become full-time chair at Tesla. Congratulations to Robin, and here's to a smooth transition. Alphabet's self-driving company Waymo has been working on autonomous vehicle tech now for more than 10 years, and its current generation of autonomous vehicles are already demonstrating level five autonomous operation in both Phoenix, Arizona, and in the San Francisco Bay Area, California. To date, its test fleets have offered service through its 400-person early rider program, but this week we learned that it's allegedly readying itself to launch a paid autonomous taxi service in Phoenix as early as December. Following some speculation and a few sightings of Model 3s fitted with strange new charge ports, Tesla has confirmed that European Model 3s, production for which is now underway, will ship with a CCS quick charge port instead of the Type 2 port of European Model S and Xs or the Tesla connectors found on North American cars. This means Model 3s in Europe will be able to use Tesla superchargers, which are also getting retrofitted with CCS, as well as a public CCS quick charge station. And to ensure existing customers aren't left out, Tesla's also announced a new CCS quick charge adapter as well. General Motors has been producing electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles for some time now, and in recent months it's really been ramping up its plans for many, many more plug-in models, with 20 promised in the next five years alone. This week, however, we learn that pickups won't be among those models, with GM executive Mike Abelson confirming that for the foreseeable future, GM will continue to roll out pickups and SUVs as it works on its electric and autonomous vehicle products in the passenger car segment. If you're frustrated by this or want some logic behind it, I've made a video on it that you can watch right here. Faraday Futures' spiral into the history books continued this week with the news that the third of its trio of co-founders has finally decided to leave the company, leaving Faraday Future with very little in the way of C-level execs. Yet as the death dance continues, EVAIO Blockchain, a blockchain cryptocurrency firm, has announced it's offered Faraday Future a $900 million funding package in order to keep the company afloat. It wants to build a blockchain for electric cars, so the investment does seem to make some sense. Will it happen? Well, talks are ongoing, so uh, watch this space. Mercedes-Benz has officially begun deliveries of its GLC F-Cell plug-in hybrid this week in Europe. Combining plug-in hybrid car tech with a hydrogen fuel cell, the GLC F-Cell is designed for fleet use and combines a battery pack capable of up to 51 kilometers of electric range, that's 30 miles or thereabouts, on the NED test cycle before it turns its onboard fuel-extended system on to extend the car's range. 
The fuel cell stack, meanwhile, can add an additional 430 kilometers, 267 miles of range per fill, which is less overall than, say, a Tesla. But the advantage for fleets is the fueling time that hydrogen has. Yes, electric makes sense for most, but for fleet operators, this may be a smart choice depending on the use case scenarios. Volkswagen continued its electric car strategy media push this week, claiming that it's already given the green light to build a total of 50 million electric vehicles on its MEB platform, obviously with help from the MEB electrification toolkit across the various brands it owns. What's more, it claims that it secured 50 million electric cars worth of battery packs to ensure that all those new models will be built. It sounds like impossible greenwash, but I think Volkswagen isn't planning this massive number of cars overnight. Instead, well, it's making public the kind of things every other automaker knows to keep quiet. Who will get there first? Well, that's something that's completely different. We know that Ford is already working on its own production electric Mustang, but now there's going to be a way to get hold of a classic 1960s styled one with all wheel drive, three second sprint time and 400 horsepower. Behold the Charge electric Mustang from British firm Charge Automotive for a cool quarter million dollars. No, I'm not joking. You can have one of 499 limited production cars. Range? Well, it's only 124 miles, but then if you've got a quarter million dollars, I'm guessing it's not your biggest concern. How the other half live, eh? If you prefer your electric vehicles a little more practical, then you might want to take a look at this, an all-electric prototype Ural motorcycle, complete with sidecar. Based on the one-wheel drive CT chassis, the electric CT makes use of zero motorcycle supplied powertrains and hints that an all-electric Ural might be on the way in the future. Given that I have a soft spot for these motorcycles, I mean, they are the ultimate in go-anywheres if you're into combination outfits, I am really hoping they'll let me pop up to their US headquarters and put this through its paces. Sadly, though, it isn't a two-wheel drive variant, and I don't know if it's got reverse gear or not. The EV1, the iconic electric car from the turn of the century, which so many people loved and which was taken back and mostly crushed, is a car that pretty much every EV fan out there will recognize thanks to its iconic shape and Chris Payne's excellent Who Killed the Electric Car film. While most EV1s were crushed, a handful were immobilized, they had bits removed by GM, and then donated to museums and universities with strict instructions that they should never be used on the road again. <clears throat> Some survivors are very much loved, others have been left to rot on university campuses. But this week we heard a rumour that the EV1 donated to UC Berkeley was recently stolen late at night. I've contacted UC Berkeley, but as of the time of this recording, I've not been able to verify the rumours as the college is currently closed due to nearby wildfires. And finally, Dubai is known for having a lot of money. It's also known for its love of fast cars, the various supercars and hypercars it has on its police fleet, and more recently, its eagerness to adopt new technology. Well, this week we learned that the Dubai Police Force now have new vehicles in the form of all-electric hover bikes, and they've been learning how to fly them to chase down the criminals. Based on these videos, however, I'm not sure they're going to catch anyone, given how slow these hover bikes appear compared to your average sports car. It's truly truly bonkers. I'm sorry. No, it's mad. It's certifiable. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, well, send it our way. In the meantime, I hope that you have a fantastic week ahead, that you had a great weekend, and I'll see you next time for another show. You'll find out when we upload new Ecotech goodness by hitting the bell below. And while you're at it, don't forget to switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Don't forget to do your bit and help keep emissions as low as possible by getting your electrons free of nasty greenhouse gas emissions. But thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.